I'm Patrick Bailey with iQlist. Today is May 8th, 2022. And in this video, I'm going to show uh, a simple panel mount that I made in OpenSCAD to mount some metal IKEA panels that I bought a few years ago. Okay, so what I have here is I have these IKEA metal panels that I bought, I don't know, a long time ago. I've had them for a long time. And I want to mount them now that I'm kind of redecorating and get this all organized. I want to mount four of them up here. And for my purposes, what I've done is I actually have this plywood up here. So I got space, so I can kind of, the idea is I can drill things into it without really hurting my wall any more than I already have. Um, so I wanted to put some brackets in here that would wrap around and hold it. So what I've done, here I'll show the green one. So I've already got everything lined up and ready to go where it should be. And all I'm using is some um, deck screws. These happen to be one and a quarter. Now if you're drilling into a wall, you got to hit the stud. <laughs> this is not going to hold well otherwise. So if you're going to think about that, uh, you may want to think about taking my OpenS kit and redesigning it. You know, one idea is you might take these squares and put them vertically, and that way you could hit, rather than have them horizontal, maybe have them uh, vertical so that you could uh, hit a stud and put them in a different spot. But that's another time for another story. I'm just going to show you what I've done to solve my problem. So I've already got one screw in there. I'll get this last one in. And of course, you just want to get it snug because it's plastic. I mean, you can really, you could break these. They're tough, but they're not that tough. And the next thing is I have all these, um, these guys that are going to, I don't know what you, best thing to call them, over wrappers, whatever, which you, the, these threaded 3D printed bolts can go through just fine. And these are threaded right here so I can screw them right in. And these, the ones I made here are 15 millimeter, so you can just get a socket wrench. But be careful if you're using a socket wrench, because these aren't metal bolts. You can snap them if you put too much. You can make you just a little bit of snugness, you're good. Anything beyond that, you're probably going to break it. Also, this one I just printed normally. Uh, but I did modify when I printed these bolts. I printed these bolts with a few extra perimeters and a 50% infill, just to hopefully make them a little stronger. So hopefully these will be a little tougher than what I made. I don't think you need to do that, per se. but. Don't grill and break them. I already got this whole thing lined up from before. And the idea is I get it in there and then I can come down. Get those bolts in a little bit. And I can grab some of these other guys. Now I'm going to replace this green one with a black one. I just did the green one to hopefully it comes up a little better on video than the black ones. Black on black tends to, you kind of lose the details. Okay. And then I happen to have, like I said, a 15 millimeter, so I can show that just to prove my, there we go, 15 millimeters. That's how I designed them. So. Otherwise, you will be printing out more bolts when you break them, like I did. And then, just even that much, you know, it's not, you can't get it out. So there's that. Uh, and also, I think, with this basic design for the cover here, you could do anything. You could go make an icon. I could make an iq one or something with some holes in it. I could make a circle. I could do a lot of different things uh, to decorate, right? So with that, that's how it works. Now let's go through the details and the OpenSCAD and all that fun. 
Okay, let's show some URLs. So first of all, the wall panel brace is up here on on printables. So I'll be able to put a link in the show notes, but here it is. You can go download it and all the OpenSCAD files are here this time. Uh, because I think it's something you probably want to adjust based on your own needs. Now for those who just want the SCAD real quickly, I also put it on GitHub. So here's this one and here's the other one. There's two pieces and the links in the show notes. You can go download them. So with that, let's go over the details and then we'll talk some more about it. So to print uh, one of these, it just takes three hours and 42 minutes to print. It takes 3.4 cents worth of electricity and it weighs 0 0.028 kilograms and at $20 per kilogram comes out to 56 cents worth of material. So all in, 60 cents to print this. But you need four per board. Depending on what you're doing, maybe you could do three if you were going to rearrange them. Or maybe you could do two. Be kind of, you know, one on the top, one on the bottom, something like that. Uh, but for four, so total for my cost, $2.40 to print. Um, you're going to pay more than that at a store to get something like this. So all in all, you know, uh, pretty worthwhile print. Now let's uh, look at a little bit of the OpenSCAD if I can find my mouse. Okay, so there's the OpenSCAD. And really what it's doing is we have this, we're pulling in a thread. So I need to adjust a little bit, but we have a thread. Oh, you know what? I need to go stick that thread out there. Ah. I'll go stick the thread out there too because we're pulling an STL file, which is the thread that's not needed uh, for when you want to print this. But if you want to adjust it, you need to pull that the thread in because that thread is being put right here. In fact, if I put something else here so it's not valid, we'll see they're just they're just cylinders. Because that thread is a 10 millimeter thread that I made in Fusion 360 just as a file and then pulled it in. And then also down here we have, let's see, we should be mirroring these. Where's my mirror? Oh, I guess I'm not mirroring them, but I am doing, up here I have the thread offset. There you go, thread offset, five. So you can change the, the depth and the height of these. Uh, you may not be able to go much deeper seeing as I have a 10 millimeter thread. Boom, boom. Let me see, what did I, how did I code this? So here I have the height, but I could add four, three to it. And we'll see, we'll go up higher, but that's gonna present, well, not too much of a problem because you will have this gap right here. So you can actually still thread into it if you want to make it, make it deeper. But if you want to make it less, see now you got a problem because you have this exposed here and you're gonna need to either recreate um, those 10 millimeters in another in Fusion 360 and bring them in. In fact, you know what? Maybe I won't, you know what? I'm not gonna put the 10 millimeter threads in here. If someone needs them and wants to tweak on them, just ask me and I'll do a video showing how to make the 10 millimeter threads easily enough in Fusion 360, and then you can adjust it how you want. So in my case, I have this, you know, this high because that works for my panels. But if your panels are thinner or thicker, you might need to do something different. And also these are just some generic hexagons I've used in the past. In fact, they're circles, but you can actually come down here. Let me see where I did this. Screw hole. Okay, so I have a method called screw hole here, which actually does both of them, the upper and the lower. But you can see when you make a cylinder, you can tell it to be less refined. And if I tell it to be six, I get a hexagon. If I tell it to be eight, I'll get an octagon. Let me change the other one to A so it's a little more visual. Boom. Uh, or, you know, I could make a hundred and then it would be a circle. But it's a neat, nice way to cheat if you want to get a hexagon real quickly. You make a cylinder and you dumb it down. And if you don't have the angle you want, you could rotate it a bit. But there's the basis of that. And I think that's pretty good for something to brace in a wall. But you might need to tweak it. Like I'm, I have an idea right now. I have something else I need to hang on my wall. Well, it is hanging on my wall. Uh, and I have them lined up with studs and I'm it's hung on the wall, but I want to redo it and this might actually work You know, I'll probably do a video on this because I think I'm 80% sure I'm gonna do this Where I do like this idea right here, but I'll probably if you're gonna do a stud It's not this idea is not gonna work with them being a horizontal like I said I need them vertical So I'll probably make one that's more like a mr. T a T sign mr. T make a T sign so I'll probably put one here and then put one below, same thing, uh, but make it a T and make and adjust this accordingly. And then I could mount it, so eh, pretty simple. So you can take it, you can tweak it. The only thing that might be a little, uh, shouldn't be time consuming, is dealing with that 10 millimeter thread. You can make your own Fusion 360 and drag it in. But then the other idea is something on top. This one's bare bones basic. You know, so I have the same dimensions where those holes are, and I just basically made those cylinders 
and it's just a block. There's not, not much to it. So I could go here and say, you know what? I really don't need it that thick. Oh, and um, the nuts, uh, the bolts, the, bolt, the nut bolts were just completely made in Fusion 360 because it's simple enough to do there. I need to do the threads in there anyway. So it's just all done in Fusion 360. In fact, I could probably bring that up. So let me see in a second. So let me change, let me add a five to the height. Boom. We can, so we could make it thicker. We could make it thinner if I needed to and redesign it. Now, one idea I have, and I think I, I mentioned it before here, is now I have a system behind me. And this is actually gonna somewhat work for what I have an ID on the wall. My ID on the wall, where I'm gonna change where I connect it, but I'm gonna leave where the bolt pattern where it, where it is. And that way I can keep, the, uh, keep this pattern and I can design something different here which I need to for my other idea. But also behind me, I could change this. I can I could make this whole thing a circle and have those holes cut out. And I could put an IQ list symbol behind me, which I might do, or any other number of things. If I really wanted to make my own version of a sticker behind me, you know, but a 3D printable sticker, if I want to do a, um, I don't know, what's a good idea? Like YouTube, if I ever make 100,000 subscribers, which I am eons away from that, I could make a little cool YouTube placard thing or I could just make a generic YouTube to let people know I'm on YouTube behind me or uh, Twitter or whatever I want to do. And I could just make those behind me and stick them on. So I think that's an interesting idea. Okay, with that, let me see if I can get the Fusion 360. Do I have it open? Come on, Fusion 360. I will get it here. Fusion 360, there we go. Um, where did I do it? Tell me, I think it's over here. There we go. So Fusion 360, I've got the threads, pretty easy to make, and I got the bolt. So the bolt's pretty, pretty, well, let me erase that. Bolt, you can see, is really easy. If I go back to the beginning here, you know, this is not a, a teaching video here, per se. Right, let me go mess myself up there. Let me select my bolt. I'll go back to the beginning here. And if I look at this, all I did was make a hexagon here and I made a circle. And the simple next step is just, you know, pull that up to the height I want the bolt and then pull that up for the bolt in there and then apply Apply the thread, and then one thing I actually do with threads is I go in there and I, and I pull them back two millimeters. Uh, well, point two. So I edit this feature. You can see here, you can kind of move the face. I'll do a ridiculous, I'll do negative one. You'll see it pulls it in. But I find the standard one can kind of be stiff, so I usually kind of move it about point two. And with 3D printing, that seems to work pretty good for me. I actually move it point two on this one and I move it point to on the other side, and it both seems to mesh pretty good. But I'll just cancel that since I need that. And this one, not gonna go in detail either, but pretty simple. Come over here, and did I lose my sketch? Just two circles, two simple circles, and then we pull up the circle. Now the inner circle is the size of my thread, and then we apply a thread to the center, and then the same thing, we go and readjust the thread. So pretty easy, pretty basic, not much to it. Um, okay, you know what? Let me just make another one just to, because walking through like this is a little too quick. So for those who are done, you can, you can be done. But let me take a minute and we'll just make, we'll just recreate these. It's easy enough. I'll say new component and I'll say bolt. Bolt. We'll hide the other guys come down here and I'm not going to do it precise. I'll come down here and I'll say create a sketch. Create a sketch. Hit my S key for my shortcuts. And I have a lot of shortcuts I've added here. Like here is a circumscribed let's see, circumscribed. Click on that. And I'll say I want six sides. That's good. And I'll say 7.5 I think. Don't quote me on that. That might be wrong for 15 millimeter. Okay, I'll do this. Do a 10. 
Boom. So 7.5. In fact, I can go back and cheat and look at my old one real quick, because I probably didn't do that the same way. Oh, not that one. No, 7.5. There we go. Right there. 7.5, but a flat edge. So I think I'm close to being right. Let me hide those. Hide this one. Hit S key again. Oh. Edit the sketch. And if I look at this, we'll kind of... Oh, let me look at it. There we go, 7.5. Okay, so that is correct. That is correct. So I'll finish that sketch. Hit Q for my press pull tool. Select that one. I'll just go up 15. I'm not sure exactly what it was before. But when you do this, the sketch goes away. So I'll click over here, bring the sketch back, click on that one. And if I want to be anal, click on the center one too. Press press pull again. Oh, nope. Forget my analness. I'll just press this one. Press Q and go up 5 as an example. And there I got the basics of a bolt. And now I'm in 3D mode, so hit S. I choose my thread. Now this is my shortcuts. If, you don't, if your threads aren't shortcuts, you can search for threads. And once you find it, like here, I'll, you can add it to the, you can add it. So I'll click on that, threads, model it, and hit OK. And hit, then I'll select the plane there, Q for my press pull tool again, and point to. Boom, easy peasy. Not exactly what I did for before my bolt, but pretty close. Now if I go over here and say, create a new component. Boom. I'll do a similar thing. I'll say, create a sketch that I did before. And I'll say, there's my inner guy, which is 10. And I'll make another one. We'll call it 12. Boom. Finish my sketch. Q for press pull, I'll just enter 10. And then S in my 3D mode, hit thread, click on that, modeled, hit OK. And then press that, Q, negative 0.2, enter. That's it. That's all I did. And then once you're done with these things, you select the model you want, right click on it, and say save as mesh. That easy. That simple. So there's a little quick Fusion 360 tutorial. Um, I'm liking this idea. I love Fusion 360. I think it's a great tool. OpenSCAD I think is a great tool too. They serve different purposes and they serve different people. It's nice when you can think in both because I think there's some things you can do better in OpenSCAD than you can do in Fusion 360. Um, and there's some things you can you can you could pretty much do m most everything in both tools. But some things become really difficult in OpenSCAD, and some things become difficult in Fusion 360, but marrying both of them can kind of work. Now, for those who aren't computer savvy minded, you don't need OpenSCAD. You can probably do everything I did here, I could have done in Fusion 360 pretty easily. Um, but I kind of like having those variables around so I can make some quick adjustments. So, And I know you can do parametric variables in Fusion 360, but I kind of prefer the OpenSCAD coding in some cases. So anyway, with all that, let's wrap this up. Uh, with a reminder that 3D printing is an engineering adventure that you're on. You can develop your skills and knowledge and take this in so many ways. You can make a business out of this. You can teach others and you can make some amazing designs. So design it, engineer it. I am redoing the famous T-Rex skull by MakerBot. Britt Scott, a fellow 3D printing enthusiast, was able to clean up the original STL files in such a way to make it OpenSCAD compatible. The originals would not work with OpenSCAD. I have a plan for it with a few phases. The first is to fill in that pesky hole they made in it and to resize it to roughly as big as you can go on a Prusa Mini. That part I just got done. Next phase is to add in a thread where the hole used to be and completely redo that stand they made with a removable plaque so that you can print it separately. I think this will give the possibility of doing some cool plaques by varying the layers. Anyway, more to come on that as it comes.